and father we thank you we thank you because you are the daddy with the pamper father we rest in it we are not like other people that don't know god our god knows us our god loves us he provides for us he takes care of us we rest in this today we rest in this today lord we refuse to be worried and perturbed we rest in the love of jesus christ we give you praise oh god in jesus name we pray praise the lord hallelujah please you can have your seats such a powerful time of ministry and all the ladies i hope you feel so special already hallelujah you feel so special make sure you do a video on you know online and share a story you know the reason why is that i always say share a story that our world especially because of a lot of things that happened just within the recent past there's a lot of pain and hurt and discouragement that people are going through so i will always believe our response is sharing good stories and great stories and positive stories because that's what's going to kill the negativity praise the lord hallelujah glory to god all right so today we're talking about what to do when life isn't working what to do when life isn't working what to do when life isn't working when i check sometimes when i check when i have the opportunity and the time to check my dm on social media i have all of this i sometimes i have all of those people that keep telling me i don't know why my life is like this i don't know why my life is terrible you know people say things to me like i hate my life where is my life why is my life like this why are things not working with me why 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 has god forgotten me why am i so unhappy and they keep saying things like this and if you are that way then this service is going to help you this service is going to help you teach you two things number one is going to if your life is not working how to have a turnaround and if your life is working how to take it to another level by the power of god the first thing you want to do if your life is not working is to change your belief is to what change your belief the reason why is this the bible says in proverbs chapter 23 it says as a man thinketh in his heart so is he you have to change your belief system your belief system you have to change it what are beliefs beliefs are very powerful beliefs are beliefs are, are like vehicles beliefs are like what they are like vehicles you know whatever you believe eventually becomes a reality that's the law of belief because it will be unto you according to your faith whatever you believe eventually becomes your reality so beliefs are like vehicles you know once you believe i'll give an example if you enter a plane going to um abidjan once you enter the plane the next time you will stop to be in abidjan yes or no because that's your destination your belief is your destination to take you there so the question now what do you believe right now the challenge most people is that they believe they want something else but they believe something else so they want success but they believe failure so there's an issue so where's my belief bring my wheelbarrow for me they bring my wheelbarrow for me yeah just bring one of them yeah good yeah and i'm gonna call some guy yeah, yeah come is this strong and clean? You sure? Sit in it. So this is your belief system. Come, stand. He, he can't sit in it. You need to help him knock him off into it. This, this is you. This wheelbarrow, just step back a little, sir. This wheelbarrow is your belief system. The thing is that once you have a belief system, your belief system begins to carry you. So the question is that what belief system is carrying you through life? And I'll give an example. Some of you believe that life is hard. That mentality will begin to carry towards hardship. Some of you believe that people will never help me. That belief will carry towards that. So, but guess what? This is the most powerful thing about beliefs. We don't believe. Belief is not what we choose intentionally for most people. Belief happened to us. A lot of things you believe, you can never remember when you made the choice. Yes or no? Exactly. But the thing is this. If you didn't make the choice to believe that, and it's not working for you, you can change it. But most of you always think that, well, it's my belief. What can I do about it? So you say things like, you know, you say things like, you know, I'm lazy. How did you get that from? You know, I'm shy. Where did you get that from? It's something you've told yourself over and over again that now you believe. You, you, you tell yourself things. So what's this now? So this is your belief. Help me knock him into, this, in, into his belief system. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 
He's knocked into his belief system. So, he believes this. You know what happens? His belief begins to carry him. That's what his belief does. His belief carries him. There's nothing he wants to do. It's his belief that carries him and packs him somewhere. And I'm saying so because you need to ask yourself, what I believe, where is taking me to do I want it? I don't know if it's me or the video you're looking at. <laughs> so, what I believe. So, so, when you believe that nothing works in Nigeria, guess what your belief does? This is your belief. Nothing works in Nigeria. Nothing works in Nigeria. Nothing works. So, this is where there's money in Nigeria. This place. You say, here, it will not stop. It will take you to where there's no money. He said, because you believe that what? Nothing works. So, here, where there's poverty in Nigeria, you take you there and pack. And when he takes you there, you say, oh, I always knew. And it's a law of self-fulfilling prophecy. So, when you say things like, ah, you know marriage is a battle. You see what I'm saying? It, it will carry you. When there's peace in marriage, you will never be there. It will carry you to a place where there is no peace. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So you must always remember, your beliefs are vehicles. You need to ask yourself, what vehicle have I entered today? God does not like me. You will always have experiences that shows God does not like you. Because that's what you believe. And what you can do, bring the other wheelbarrow. So if this belief is this, don't worry, relax. I think that you're very stiff. You've not been thrown down yet. Yeah. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. So good. If one belief, put this further ahead so that it can be different. You can, you can leave it there. I stay with it. Stay with it. If one belief is not helping you, you know what you can do? You can get up from the belief. Can you get up? Yeah. And get into what? Another belief. The question is this. The question I want to ask you. What belief do you need to get out of today? And what belief do you need to get in today? Let me tell you a belief I struggled with. I struggled to believe that I'm not enough. I struggled with that. I was like, you know, even, even in my pastoring, I wanted to write Christian books. I said, Who, who's going to read my book? Who, who knows me? This is me. But what I did to myself was that I got that from that belief that I'm not enough to the belief that what? I am enough. And most of the time, the negative belief is the opposite that you need to believe. So I would tell myself, and someone says, is that possible? Sure. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. All right. Let, let's go. Let's go. Are we ready? See what the Bible says here. Proverbs, you can take it. Yeah. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. God bless you. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 19. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 19. Let's go quickly. Verse 19. Change your belief. So if your life is not working, change your belief. If your life is not working, change your belief. Proverbs 28, verse 19. See what the Bible says here. The Bible says, He that tilleth his own land shall find what? Gold. But that's not the common belief. The common belief is that what can, I can't prosper from what I do. He says, But he that tilleth his own land shall have what? Gold. This is very powerful. He that tilleth his own land shall have what? Gold. So let me get a microphone quickly here. You know, and ask people, what do you believe? How many of you believe that I'm not good, I'm not good enough to serve God? Some people, so, so what believe, what believe is working against you? Yeah, yeah. Sister Yola, tell me something. What believe, yeah, yeah. What believe that is working against you? Yeah. What that is limiting you? Yeah, tell me. Just give her the microphone. Okay, so. Please hold it closer to your mouth. I would say, so before now, because I, I want to believe that I've moved away from that belief. Yes, yes. Right? Um, but before now, it was, am I good enough? Wonderful. Um, when you had that belief, am I good enough? What, did, what couldn't you do? How did it impact you? So for me, it was my career. Wow. Um, it was just me feeling that I was not good enough, even though I had the knowledge. And, right? and did that affect you in your career? Absolutely. It did. Yes. So, you know why? Because your belief will always carry you to what you believe. 
So the question is this, and, and the thing is, I love what she said. He said that I've dealt with that. So she came out of that belief and entered another belief. And what's that belief? I'm good enough. So if your life is not working, you need to ask yourself, what belief is working against me? Because the reason why your life is not working that, see, in life, whatever you desire does not matter. It's the, it's the vehicle you are in that matters. Because your vehicle is, has a destination already. The second thing you have to change when it comes to life is this. If your life is not working, is this. And that's the Bible says, he that tilleth his land shall find gold. Some people say, until I move to Canada, I will not succeed. I wish you all the best. I will succeed here. When I move to Canada, I will succeed again. Because my success is not tied to location. The Bible says, I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bears its fruit in season. Psalm 1 verse 3, I'm like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bears its fruit in season. If labor enters, I prosper. If PDP enters, I prosper. If ABC enters, I prosper. NAP enters, I prosper. Whatever the party is, because the Lord is my shepherd. The political party is not my shepherd. Their candidate is not. The Lord is my shepherd. I feel very bad for people that tie their prosperity to the politician. I feel very bad. My prosperity tied to God. It, yeah, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. This is even a king. You know, if you tie your prosperity to a king or politician, who would they tie their own to? But the king is wise. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He didn't say, because I'm a king, I shall not want. Glory to God. The second thing, if you want to change your life so you change your belief, the second thing is it, you have to change your focus. And this is very powerful. You have to change your focus. Let me ask you, do you know what you focus on will determine how you feel and how you live? Let me tell you something. If you focus on failure, will you be happy or sad? Wow. But what do you focus on? Do you focus on the great things happening in your life or you focus on what's happening in your life? Do you focus on the great things happening in your career or you focus on the things not happening in your career? So people focus on success or failures. The second thing is that pattern of focus. Do you focus on what is missing or what is available? Hmm. Think about it. What do you focus on? You know, there's something that really struck me in the Bible. Jesus Christ went to the pool of Bethesda, and the Bible says there was a multitude of sick people. They know what the Bible did? The Bible documented only the story of the person that was healed and did not document other people. Because the Bible focused on what, what God was doing, not what he was not doing. In your life, are you focused on what God is doing or what he's not doing? You know, if it was today, if one person got healed in the multitude, remember the verse there was a multitude at the pool of Bethesda. It was a multitude. Media would have said, it's a fake miracle because out of 5,000 people that were there, only one person, they would have focused on the other people. But to show how God thinks, God focuses on what is available. No one is missing. I want to ask you a question. When you focus on what is available or what you have, how do you feel? Bring the microphone and give it to the lady. Yeah, give it to the lady here on the third row. Yeah. Give it to her. Yeah. On the third row. Yeah. yeah. Just go to her. Yeah. Happy. What? Happy. I feel happy. Contented. You feel content. You feel, you feel grateful. Yes. Once you focus on what is, not, what is missing, how do you feel? I feel sad. Feel dejected. Do you see that? In your life and every time in life, there's what is available and there's what's missing. Every time. When you see people that are depressed, talk to them. They are focusing on what is missing. So on a day like this, Mother's Day, you're like, huh, my mother is dead. If only she was here, all my life will not be like this. You know what I focus on? My mother is late. I say I'm so proud of the child my mother raised. I, that is what is available. So I says, I'm a married woman. I have no child. What does mother say to me? Lord, I thank you. Because on this Mother's Day, I get to celebrate with the love of my life. What about if you were single? 
will even be thinking of a child. What is, do you focus on what is available or what is missing? And what you focus on will determine who you, how you behave. And if your life is not working, the reason why is that you're focusing on what is not working. And guess what? Once you focus on what's not working, you know, you know what your focus does? Let me teach you how to focus on something. Once you focus on something, you feel more energy. That's why the way you focus is that you repeat it in your head. You replay. It's called replay over and over again. That's why when someone insults you, you feel more pain afterwards. Yes or no? Why? Because the more you replay, it's focus. You replay, replay, replay. The pain comes more and more and more and more and more and more and more. The question is, that why are you doing that to yourself? Many of you are still replaying the breakup of three years ago. Many of you are still replaying the loss of two years ago. You are still replaying the disappointment of last month. And you're feeling more pain. Listen to me. The more you replay bad experience, the stronger the focus, the stronger the pain. So why is your life not working? Because you're replaying bad experience of it not working. And it goes stronger and you feel the pain. Let's jump quickly. So what do I get to do right now? How do I take responsibility for my life? I mean, I have the third thing I want to. There, there are many patterns of focus there. And this is something I train myself. I always train myself on what is available. You know, we move into this auditorium and the sound is challenging and it's not great like our church. And I can choose to focus on that. I can choose to be like, wow, we're only here for a short time. We'll get back to our church. It will be much more beautiful. And, and guess what? You know what's, what surprised me? This place, we noticed that we moved here, we just grew by 10%. I'm like, oh, wow. It's almost like, wow, because this place, it's like, wow, just like 10%. I'm just enjoying it. I can keep going like, you know, this. Someone says, how much do you pay? It's so expensive. If I focus on how much I pay, I can't control how much they will charge me. But I've paid. Can I enjoy what I've paid? I... That's the problem. You go to a restaurant, it's an expensive food. You'll be thinking of the bill so much, you don't enjoy it. And the joy you should have. See, you must learn to enjoy some things. And when people don't enjoy it, it's because they focus on what they can control and not on what they can control. Hey, we're here. We paid. It's a lot of money we paid. You know, the other day we're like, why are we not holding medic services? It's a lot of money to hold medic services. We're being charged several millions to hold medic services. And I said, I said, oh, wow, we're not medic services. I said, but the beautiful thing is that we can gather the leaders together. So last Wednesday, all the leaders gathered together, about 300 of us gathered together. And guess what? It was an amazing night for the leaders. Yes or no? What a shock. See how excited they are. If we had had midweek services, we'll have not had the opportunity to experience that. There's always what is missing and what is available. In your marriage, do you focus on what is missing? My husband doesn't do this. He doesn't do this. Doesn't do this. What about what is available? The things he does. Your husband is a great provider. Do you focus on that? Do you focus on the fact that no matter what your wife is faithful? Do you focus on that? Do you focus that no matter what your wife loves you to pieces and she's a great mother? Or you focus on the fact that, yeah, well, she snores, she's grown fat. And the question is that if you keep focusing on that, what will you become? Unhappy, very sad, and dejected. So, how do you take responsibility for that? So we've, we've explained to you why, what to do when your life is not working. What do you do? You change your belief. The second thing, what? You change your focus. This is what the Bible says in Isaiah 43, verse 18. Isaiah 43, verse 18. This is what the Bible says. It says, remember not the former friends. It says, don't focus on the past. It says, neither consider the things of old. It says, focus on what I'm doing. I thought we were going to put the scripture on the screen. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 18. It says, remember not the former thing, neither consider the things of old. It said, behold, I'm doing a new thing. How do you take responsibility for your life and go forward? One of the things you do is this, by setting goals. By setting goals. By setting goals. Proverbs 
chapter 29 in verse 18. Proverbs chapter 29 in verse 18. Oh, wow. This scripture you must know. The Bible says where there is no vision, and the translation says where there is no goal, it said the people perish. Another, another way to say that where there is no goal, potential is destroyed. Potential is never realized. One of the ways you're going to take responsibility for your life is by setting goals. You must remember, you don't get the life you deserve. You get the life you create. How do you create your life? By setting powerful goals. That's how you create your life. How do you take responsibility for your life? By setting goals. If you leave your life to chances, you will be chanced in life. Thank you for the whistle. If you leave your life to chances, you will be chanced in life. If you leave your life to chances, you will be chanced in life. You must become very deliberate about your spiritual growth. You must become deliberate about your career growth. You must be deliberate about your marital goals. When you see strong marriages, they may not even be able to put it in words, but they have intentional strategy that keep their marriages strong. I'm telling you, you will hear things like, oh, we always go out every month. We always do this every summer. We always do this. They may not know that's what keeps it. Oh, you, you know, my husband always send me text three times in a day. We always make sure we have sex twice in a day. And I was listening to some pastors, you know, and they were telling me they had a 48 hour rule. And what's the 48 hour rule? If someone initiates sex, and if you're not able to have sex at that time because of how you feel, you have 24 to 48 hours to initiate sex or else you pay a fine. <laughs> but, but the reason why they do that is that so that there will be no what emotional detachment. It's amazing. So I'm only telling you, you get the life. So when you see your marriage, you say, I want this kind of marriage. It's, you don't get the marriage you desire. You get the marriage what you create. You don't get the finance you desire. You get the finance what you create. You don't get the spiritual life. Someone said, I want to be a prayer warrior. You don't get the spiritual life you desire. You get the spiritual life you create. And how do you create? By setting goals. Proverbs 29 says that where there is no goal, where there is no vision, the people perish. Potentials are destroyed. Why are goals important? Because goals give focus. I said goals do what? Give focus. Can you pass the ball? Just the ball. Yeah, it's a basketball, right? Yeah, score. Bounce it and score. Yeah, ba bounce it and score. Oh yeah, score. What? You know why? This is how many of you are playing life. You are just playing life like this. Playing your income like this. You know, th there's no place to score because there's no goalpost. So, your finance is just moving from hand to hand, hand to hand, relationship, hand to hand, hand to hand, your spiritual life, hand to hand, hand to hand. There's no goalpost. Let's change the game. Bring the goalpost. Can you put the goalpost somewhere here? Now there is a goalpost. There's a place to score. Question, where are you scoring in life? Where is the goalpost in your finance? Do you have a goalpost in your finance? That some of you say, I make a lot of money, but I don't know where it goes because there's no goalpost. Some of you say, in your career, is it a goal? In your marriage, is it a goalpost? In your spiritual life, is it a goalpost? For example, when you see me write my goals, I write how many hours I must pray every day. It's my goal. Every day. It's my I must write, read this how many hours, how many scripture I must read. It's there. Finances, how much? So the question is that where this is the goalpost. Where is the goalpost when it comes to your finance? Where is the goalpost when it comes to your prayer life? Where is the goalpost when it comes to ministry? Where is the goalpost when it comes to your family, your children? Where is the goalpost? That's why some of you don't even know if your children are doing well or not because you don't have things you want them to learn at certain ages. At a certain age in my house, I would tell my wife, I said, The kids need to watch their plates right now. Why? Because they must learn. To do something. At a certain age, man, every child must have some kind of business they are doing because they must learn some values. You know, you know, I was telling my son, I said, I said, he, he can pray. And I said that 
you pray too short. And, you know, you were like, okay, that, that I would pray one hour every day now. I said, how are you going to do that from where you are? It's just difficult. I said, okay, I'm going to do 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the evening. But that's a goalpost. Many of you that are raised children don't have goalposts. So what do you, all you want to say, did they come first? There's a goalpost. Question, what is the goalpost? You know what goalpost does? When I say score, score now. Now, you see what I'm saying? He has a place to score. The reason why you are not scoring in life is that there's no goalpost. And without scoring, you can't feel confident, you can't feel progressive. So when we say, when, should I, when do I know if it's time to get married or ask her to marry me? Question, what's the goalpost? When there's goalpost, you can see that we're moving somewhere. What does goals do? Number one, goals increase focus. Chuma, come quickly. Give him the ball. You stay. Goals increase focus. Effort becomes disjointed and disconnected with our goals. I mean, when you look at a country like Dubai, you see the intense focus that brought them to where they are. The next second thing goes on. Goals motivates you and helps you overcome hardship. So, score tumor, prevent him. Yeah, yeah, you see? You see? There we go. There, you, there, there we go. You see? Listen to me. Sometimes you don't have muscle because you don't have a goal. You know, because it's resistance that builds up your muscle. Someone says, I don't know how to pray. It's, you don't know how to pray because you don't have a goal. When there's something to pray about, you will have a goal. So, see, goals give focus, grows capacity, keeps you motivated. And the last thing is this. Thank you, sir. If I have goals, so areas to set your goals. Can you set spiritual goals? Can you set personal, personal growth? So personal growth is your health. The reason why is that if you don't take care of your body, when you get to 70, you'll not be proud of how you look. I'm telling you, some of you are using bleaching products, bleaching products. Actually, ladies, this bleaching product you use, I hope you see people that are bleached 20 years ago and you see their face that have multiple colors. Whatever you do, do it well. Praise God. It took my wife to teach me the need to cream my body. But when she told me I didn't believe until I read somewhere about people that don't cream their body, that when they are old, their skin becomes very dry and begins to crack. And I remember someone in my head that that happened to. From that day, I do not need motivation. Yeah, some of you don't take your bath regularly. Don't worry, when you get to 70, have you seen old people that smell? And the reason why they smell that all this enzyme that should be washed off daily have accumulated into their skin and formed extra layers. And now, it's those, en- it's those enzymes that are smelling. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So what do you do about your goals? Let's, wow, what do you do about your goals? Thank you, Jesus. Let's read. What is about your goals? So the way you take responsibility for your goals is by one of the things you do is using the power of information. The Bible says a man through desire separated himself and intermeddled with all wisdom. If you have desire, you have to intermeddle with wisdom. Listen to me. If you have a goal, the next thing you must do is to gather information about achieving your goals. Let me show you some scriptures. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3 to 4, the Living Bible. Proverbs 24, 3 to 4, Living Bible. This is very powerful. Proverbs 24, 3 to 4. I need the guys at the back to really help me so that I don't slow down. I'm really hurrying for time. Please. The media guys just know how to bless me sometimes. When I want to be fast, they say, no, we want to be slow. 
Media, are you going to put out the scripture or you're not going to put out the scripture? <laughs> I want to say you're not going to put out the scripture. What I mean is that maybe they, there's issues with it. Okay, give me the scripture. Let me read. Because I have to focus on what I can control. Well, yeah. So see what the Bible says. See what the Bible says. Let's read together. Can we read together? One, two, go. Any enterprise is built by wise planning, becomes strong through common sense, and profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the facts. See what it says. He said profits wonderfully. The reason why you are not profiting is that there are no facts. Bible says this, Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, it says, my people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. So you have a goal, can you gather information about it? Because the goal will not happen itself. You're an entrepreneur. How many books have you read about entrepreneurship? You're a father. How many books have you read about fathering? You want to learn how to pray. How much have you said about prayer? See what the Bible says here. He says this. He says this and you know, we can go back to the scripture. He says, you profit wonderfully by keeping abreast of the fact. There is no mountain anywhere. Every man's mountain is his ignorance. There is no mountain anywhere. Every man's mountain is ignorance. You want to get married. How many books have you read on marriage? Why is information powerful, number one? Because information leads to transformation. The more you know, the more transformed you are. Information is the baseline for transformation. Why is information powerful? Information gives you speed. You know why? What took other 20 years to write in the book? And you know, there's a very terrible saying about black people. Like if you want to hide something from a black man, put in a book. Because you will never read it. If you want speed, get information. If you want speed, get information. If you want speed, get information. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 6. How do you get information? Reading books. How do you get information? Mentoring. That's how you get information. Mentoring. Some of you have not read the books in Sudan University. What a life. What a life. Listen to me. People are stagnated. Not because God hates them. But they've stopped growing. People stop growing because they've stopped learning. People stop growing because they've stopped learning. Some of you need to know, some of the jobs you have will be out of place because of AI. But what's the next thing? Those that are selling paper are screaming because paper is going out of extinction. People that were designing the recharge card, recharge card, you know, recharge card, it was a big business. They are gone. But the point is this if that is gone, where am I growing and increasing in skill? See what the Bible says here. It says, through wisdom and knowledge shall there be what? Stability of your time. It says, the reason why you have stable and consent result is because of what? Wisdom and what? Knowledge. Grow your skill by reading. Grow your skill by reading. The other day we were talking about, the, and they can put this on the screen, we are talking about the business accelerators course. And some of you are here that run businesses, once, you've not done any business course before. Abba! Praise God. Make sure that today you get information about the, the business. It's a paid course. It's a business accelerator course. The same as the Revolution Master Class. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. The same thing with the personal transformation class. You want, I mean, that's on the clip. You can take the picture and make sure that you send and say, I'm interested. I, you know, a lady attended the course and said I was making 40 million before and I'm doing 70 million in my bakery business. Every, I think every month or every week, I can't remember what it is. But that's because she learned something. Question, what is going to change you? You stop growing when you stop learning. You stop growing when you stop learning. You stop growing when you stop learning. 
you stop growing when you stop learning. You stop growing when you stop learning. You stop growing when you stop learning. You stop growing when you stop learning. God is not angry with you. You are the one that stopped learning. So stagnation comes easily to people that stop growing. I stop learning. Same thing with the personal transformation course. For those people that you want to break through, you've been praying, praying, there's no breakthrough, you want to hear the voice of God, just two days of sitting down can change everything. Sometimes there are things I'm praying for one year. I sit down with a book, I read it in one week, and that changes everything. You've been praying for a long time. Maybe it's this course that will change everything for you. Praise God. Let's pray. Will you stand on your feet?